So today we'll go ahead and uh, recap, you know, losses in piezoelectric materials. You mentioned there are a few types of losses. Uh, there was a mechanical loss. There is electrical loss, and there is piezoelectric loss. Mechanical loss is uh, related with the imaginary portion of the uh, piezoelectric, uh, you know, the elastic compliance. So under a constant electric field, so we had that term, the prime term, representing the uh, real term, and the not, uh, double prime term, representing the energy lost. And also then in this case, we had the, for the electric field, we had the uh, dielectric permittivity under constant stress, uh, which also had its, again, real part and its imaginary part. And finally, for piezoelectric loss, uh, which we discussed, it's not directly a related to a lost energy uh, as uh, these two were, uh, but we also include a an assume an imaginary form for the piezoelectric uh, charge constant. Uh, thereby, we're able to account for uh, piezoelectric loss, which is sometimes uh, an anomaly, which we're going to see in the next coming lectures. We'll understand why this is so important, why we can't just use uh, mechanical and electrical losses uh, to represent the entire physics of the material system. And we said, um, again, by, com by calculating things like in this equation where we had uh, the strain equaling the piezoelectric d constant times the e. Uh, we mentioned that piezoelectric d constant has a um, it has a uh, star term. It is a, so it results in a complex strain. And this complex strain, uh, thereby we we're gonna we're gonna use that to obviously calculate the uh, material losses. So we have this is the mechanical energy. And the mechanical energy is equal to the spring constant. Uh, and then we have that times the strain squared. Uh, this is going to end up equaling the strain squared. Sorry, this this will end up equaling the piezoelectric d constant times electric field. D constant is uh, it is a uh, star term. So what we're gonna we're, we're gonna actually end up with is we're gonna see that the mechanical stored energy under electric field. So we apply an electric field. I'm just gonna write e under an applied electric field uh, is equal to one half. A L over S E uh, times D squared E squared and the lost energy is going to be very similar in a very similar form under the applied electric field and I'm going to call that mechanical lost energy and this is nothing but the mechanical stored energy related with this uh, this lost term So this term is related to, from the uh, uh, the stiffnesses, and this term again is related from the uh, piezoelectric uh, loss parameters, the piezoelectric charge constant. So these terms, then uh, we use these loss tangents, as you remember. But this is just a recap of what we went over, and in the end, we get this loss piezoelectric loss factor uh, as uh, representing in the equations. So if we go and continue, we, we already know that instead of using the stored energy, uh, remember the body diagram, uh, we had some energy input, we had energy stored, and we had energy converted. And we have energy converted. Um, in this case, we're talking about the energy converted. Uh, and this was the mechanical energy, uh, which we we're speaking about over here. 
uh, but this input energy is really going to tell us the entire loss if we for applying an electric field. We can really just sum up uh, the electrical input energy, and the input energy is the total energy which is going in the system, and therefore it's kind of easiest to describe and account for all of the flow of energy. So again, just for the, uh, uh, the sake of uh, repeating this, uh, we know the energy is equal, solar energy is equal to that, and actually the imaginary energy, uh, or the lost energy, the lost electrical energy is equal to um, this, this term with, one, with double prime. So if you said this is the stored energy, this would be single prime, capital X obviously, and this is also capital X, A L squared, but another way we can write um, the electrical energy input in terms of uh, the lost energy in terms of the input energy is using that lost tangent because it relates them together because as you remember the dielectric lost tangent delta is equal to the uh, permittivity double prime the imaginary part over the prime part uh, so therefore we can kind of just write this tangent delta and this will take care of this uh, multiplication over and uh, therefore uh, we can come up with this relationship uh, just as we saw, uh, you know, this piezoelectric uh, loss parameter coming here, it will also come when we apply a stress, and through the piezoelectric D constant, we get polarization. So in this case, you know, we're going to calculate the stress. The strain is, the stress is being applied to the compliant, compliance under constant D, or um, constant dielectric displacement so there's no external charge coming in thus the dielectric displacement the external charge over the area uh, is going to be held constant and that's going to be the strain so thus um, we can calculate the mechanical energy in the in the same way where we have one half k in this k is the spring constant times the strain squared and we can still calculate the electrical energy using one half epsilon and in this case, we have to be careful about calculating epsilon. Uh, it's going to be under a constant strain uh, because the electric field, which is being found, is not causing stress. It's being caused by, uh, by applying stress and strain. So therefore, we have that and a l, and then we have the electric field squared. And this electric field we're going to get from here, and this relationship, as we remember. So just to understand, there's three losses occurring in piezoelectric materials. Tangent delta, which is dielectric loss, tangent phi, and, and these will all be represented as percentages. You know, the percentage of stored energy, or, or sorry, loss energy over stored energy is going to be simply uh, this factor, double prime over prime. Uh, similar is the case. Well, not very similar as the case here, where there's actually another more uh, intricate expression describing it. Uh, but it's not directly uh, related to a phase lag, as would just, you know, these forms would suggest that they're related to phase lags. Uh, but this is related to a phase lag, this is related to a phase lag, but this is a more complex interaction, uh, which is represented in similar terms. So th these are represented like this. So in order to keep consistency, we also represent the piezoelectric uh, loss portion uh, in the same way using a tangent. But it doesn't relate when I mentioned here. Uh, sorry, this is not it. Uh, we have that times the D constant equals the X, the strain. Uh, the D constant does not relate the lag of the strain from the, from the applied electric field. Uh, because if you look directly at such a plot, uh, let's say uh, the phase lag is like this. So we have a uh, and the hysteresis between electric field and strain. 
So there's, there's, you know, this area under the curve, which means there's some type of loss going on. Um, but this units, electric field, uh, times strain, they don't equal energy. Whereas when we looked at the other parameter, when we looked at strain, so we had, uh, for example, let's take SD even. Let's say we're putting force on the material and for using strain, stress, we're getting strain. So we're also going to have a similar plot. And this is a over frequency. This is, so this, uh, this uh, stress is applied over some frequency. Let's say it's a low frequency. Um, then the stress applied and the strain uh, is going to be like this. Uh, the area under this curve is energy. This is energy. So therefore we can say this is loss directly, but we cannot say uh, that this parameter here, this is actually loss. So we use this kind of a little bit in a hesitant way. Um, but at times where we only have, let's say, uh, vibration, uh, let's say uh, we have this material, we short circuit it, and then we pull on it. In this case, we will only have tangent phi prime because we only have um, this type of energy being stored. We have no electrical energy being stored. There's no electric field being developed because all the charge is just being short circuited, and not, and that is not causing any loss because this 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 wire we're assuming it's zero loss, zero resistance. So the so the charges you know they'll flow around and they'll meet their negative partners or otherwise or vice versa so in this case we only have this tangent term and these all these tangent factors and uh, we'll call them prime right now we'll go into why we're calling them prime soon enough probably in the next lecture and the next lecture we're going to be covering the frequency response of systems in general and therefore we'll get a clear idea of why we yeah, care to represent these three losses and how they kind of interact. We can kind of see when we only have mechanical energy, we work with this term. When we see we're applying an electric field, we sort of have mechanical and electrical energy, but we just lump it into this term. Uh, and similarly, if you just apply a stress, you can kind of lump it into this term. Uh, stress in on an open circuit configuration. But you know, as we apply frequency, uh, we get different energies being stored. So sometimes more energy is being stored in mechanical than electrical. Uh, and they don't relate to these properties directly uh, because of the frequency response of the system. And therefore, uh, uh, because of this reason, uh, we uh, need to understand and analyze them. So in the next lecture, sneak peek. So in the next lecture, Uh, we're going to speak about frequency response. Which is very important. We'll learn about a, a quantity, a phenomenon called resonance. And we'll be introduced to more, more ideas regarding phase and energy and power which is energy per time. So all of these ideas will be discussed uh, in the next lecture. Thanks for watching.